floating hydrometer measures the density of the water, which you need to know for the stability book calculations that follow on from the inclining experiment we did. When we come to do the heel test on this little boat, that's not something you would normally bother with. But for the inclining experiment, this actually is vital and you need to do it. Seawater normally is about 1024 kilograms per cubic meter. Brackish water might be 1013 and fresh water's 1000. So it makes quite a difference. The practical bit is quite often when you drop this in the water, it's trying to float away more quickly than you can read it. And you, you don't want to have to buy another one every week. That's about 1023, <coughs> which is simply information that has to go on the inclining experiment report form. So the next bit, practical heel test, as distinct from an inclining experiment, what we're doing is measuring how far a boat heels over with a certain number of bodies all down one side. The bodies are, properly speaking, according to the code, supposed to be taken at 75 kilos per person, except that if you know you're doing a boat that's taking people who are clearly going to weigh much more, there is a, a health and safety executive document called heavy persons in lifeboats, which doesn't necessarily apply to this, and there's various other published documents about the weights of people on boats. Normally you would use 75 kilos. You could be using 85 or even 98 for people or 87, I think, for women, if you thought that there were genuinely going to be heavier people or more heavily equipped. But what we're doing with this is just that, putting the people on the boat, measuring how far over the boat tips with the people all on one side. We're also measuring the upright freeboards and we're measuring the heeled freeboards. All of that is based on the overall length of the vessel. So the first thing we're going to do is measure the overall length of the vessel. Now let's see if we can do that bit. Who wants to hold the end of the tape? Just put it on the pontoon, Steve. It's straight. Does everybody understand what Price is doing now? He's just checking the measurement, measurement length overall. The length overall measurement, because the problem we've had in the past is that often people will come to go and do a heel test on a boat and they'll use the dimensions that are recorded somewhere else on paper and they won't measure the boat. And actually the boat is a different length to what's on the paperwork. So always check the measurements of the vessel when you go to it. There are three different types of vessel, essentially, that you might be doing a heel test on. You could be doing a heel test on a boat that has a continuous straight through deck that doesn't have a recess or a cockpit or anything in it. You could be doing a water, trough, water, water tight weather deck, that is. You could be doing one on a boat that has a water tight weather deck, but it does have a recess such as a cockpit or a lower aft working deck that is above the freeboard required height or you could do, be doing one on open boat. This thing we're looking at now is really an open boat, but we're going to probably take the measurements as if it was all the different options just to explain them. <coughs> Pardon me. So this little graph, I don't know how many of you've got this. We should have, the, the heel test form we have has a numerical table version of that on the back of it. We have sent this out to all the certifying authority members, so you should have it. The, the, the bottom line is the length overall. The coloured things up the side are the freeboard requirements, depending on whether it is the blue line, which is continuous, not stepped, raised or recessed. The red line, which is continuous, but it does have a stepped, raised or recessed deck. And, or the green line, which is an open boat with one further little uh, bit to trip you up. 
which, which is that you can see just by looking at the graph at the red line for, let's pick a 10 meter boat for talking purposes. The red line obviously has a much lower freeboard requirement of about 255 millimeters or something than the blue line, which would be coming in at 425. So why would it be logical that because a boat's got a step deck that it should simply allowed to be, have lower freeboard? It's not logical. So a boat that has a step deck or a recessed deck, the lowest part of that, the, the working deck above the scupper drains that you're walking about on, typically on a boat like this, the aft deck, can be this height for this red line, but you also have to take average freeboard measurements and the average of the freeboard to the raised fore deck area and the lower aft deck area has to still comply with what's on the blue line. That's clear as mud. First off, this test has to be done in the full load condition. So again, tanks should be full. All gear and equipment the boat might be going to carry has to be on board it. Life-saving equipment should be on board it. The code doesn't actually require you to measure the freeboard with the boat like that, empty of people. But it really is a useful idea to do that because what the MCA do need us to do these days is recheck stability at five yearly intervals when the boats are having their five year certificate renewal. And normally that will be done by checking drafts or freeboards. And if the draft or the freeboard hasn't changed in any significant way, you wouldn't have to do anything further about Ch checking or reproving the stability and when you come along to the boat at the five-year renewal if you know what the freeboard was empty like that no people on board you can easily check that if you only know what it was with the six or ten or fourteen people on board <laughs> and you haven't got six or ten or fourteen people available at the five-year renewal it's not going to be so easy to do the check so that's just so we're you're talking about the lowest freeboard. Uh, this, this is an open boat. The, the reason it's an open boat is because this lower deck level here is clearly not going to be the minimum of 200 millimeters. Ooh, I wonder if it could be. Anyway, it doesn't look as if it's likely to be 200 millimeters above the water line. And e even if it was, it doesn't have any scupper drains that I can see. So... I think if it had scupper drains, the water would be coming in. Yes, probably. <coughs> so, the, the fully decked boat, you'd have to just imagine that there is a deck running all the way along here. No, no recess there. In that situation, this height here will be the sort of lowest point of the shear line by eye, probably about there will be the freeboard. So if we just quickly measure what that is. I'd call that. Well, we've got a pretending that it's a boat with a continuous weather, what, what a tight weather deck at this height. We've got a freeboard of 820 millimeters this side. Let's we'll see what we've got the other side. <laughs> well, that's still near enough 820 this side. So we're going to put six persons on board. Let's have six volunteers. Of, and what we have to do is we have to weigh you all off. So we're still working to the 75 kilos. Um, so if you're 100 kilos, then we've got 25 kilos in the bank, haven't we? If, if this was a boat with a continuous straight through deck, its required minimum freeboard would be 300 millimetres. And we're getting 870 one side, 820 the other. So it's probably not quite so crucial on this boat whether we measure it to the nearest millimetre or not. If you were doing one that is right on the edge, obviously you want your measurements to be much more precise. The, <coughs> the code doesn't require you to weigh people. 
But the reason for weighing people is that most people these days, me included, are a lot more than 75 kilos. So if you're trying to help the client, which I get told quite often we forget we're supposed to be helping the client, which we are, to comply with the rules, then if you put six or eight people on board who all happen to weigh 100 kilos, you're going to prove that you can't carry that number of people. But if you put eight times 75 kilos on board, he might well comply. So that's the reason for weighing the people. <coughs> really? Yeah. That stern rope's gone tight again with one person on the... 91 kilos. You lie with your hands out your pockets. Come on. <laughs> 75 and a half. 75. Sorry, what's your name? Uh, Andy. Andy. 75. You are the perfect specimen. MCA man. <laughs> <laughs> so if you disperse yourselves, Hmm. Same number of people on each side, so the boat's more, more or less on an even keel. That'll be the cargo, that's ideal. Is there anything we should do with the loose gear on deck? Should we centralise it before doing any measurements? <coughs> if it looks more or less in the middle, yeah, probably. All, all the equipment should be should be in its, in its normal, normal position. Normal position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so if you if you're doing a dive boat or something that's got bottle <laughs> storage on the deck, you mustn't forget that. And also, really, you need to be considering if you're doing dive boats are particularly important to remember. Is that compared with say a charter fishing boat or something, if you're dealing with a dive boat, you might be dealing with 25 kilos of extra gear per person. So when you're doing your, your heel test, you really must make sure that you've accounted for that. Um, As in it's on board. And the, be the best way is, is to get the owner to, you, you can either you know, substitute it with weights, you know, but you need to weigh a full set of gear. That's, that's what I tend to do, is I weigh a full set of gear, <coughs> average gear, and, and then add weights for each person. King, do me a favour, you come and take this measurement. Yep. I'll actually go on board in the middle as the helmsman with, okay, the, with the heel indicator things and then I don't have to change the number of people. Yeah. So where are you um, measuring? About, about midway between those two stations. <coughs> so the stuff in the old board. What you'll find is you'll find skippers will, will turn around. They'll, they'll want a code for eight or ten or whatever. And you know, so you by all means start with that, and then you start taking the numbers off if, you, if you're going beyond seven and a half degrees of heel. The seven and a half degrees, you know, you, you've got two criticals. One is the is the down flooding point, so the freeboard measurement, and the other one is is the heel angle. Upright freeboards would be just what we've got: gear and equipment in its usual position. People arranged so the boat's generally upright. Depending on what the boat is, that could be people as you are down the sides. If it's got seating down the middle, for example, it could be people all sitting on the middle seating on the centre line. It's just the people on board that are going to be there, so the boat's, broadly speaking, upright. So, John and Keith, would you like to measure the loaded upright freeboards? 782. Port. Hold on a second till I find where we're supposed to write it. 755 starboard. Mm. This little debris I've got here is an analogue inclinometer. Uh, 782. And this one's a digital one. So <coughs> if everybody now goes to the starboard side, I'll stay here. So we've got seven, we've got what we've got nine people on the boat. We didn't weigh me, did we? Never mind. Oh. I'll catch me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe eight is a little, <laughs> little faith. 
too far anyway. We've gone to four. We've gone. We've gone yeah, to 14, yeah. 14, 14 point two degrees. Fourteen point two degrees. Ticket, What's the measure, measure the freeboard on that side, John? Anyway, just for a minute. Three up. <laughs> Four seven five. So the u the normal permitted heel angle is seven degrees. In certain circumstances, <coughs> you're allowed to go to ten degrees, and those circumstances are if the freeboard on that lowest side when the boat is heeled over is equivalent to the required upright freeboard. So that makes sense. When the boat's upright, it's got to have, with its continuous weather deck, it's got to have 300 millimeters of freeboard. What have you got there, John? Four, what do you, yeah, what did you say you measured? 475. 475, I wrote it down, didn't I? So even at 14 degrees, we're not allowed to have the boat like this because it can't go to 14 degrees, but it could go to 10 degrees. And we know because it's, we've got four, seven, five millimeters of freeboard at 14 degrees. Obviously, if we take some people off to get it down to 10 degrees, we're, we're going to still have more than the required 300 <coughs> on that side. So let's have two people off and see what happens. Who, who wants to, two My people get off. Doesn't matter, we'll just see what happens. Well, just what, 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 one, one get off first. Joe, you, Joe, you go back where you were. Let's just see what happens one at a time. Oh, there we go. You, you jump off if you would. You're right, get off, So that's, that's 95 kilos come off. It's even more. Yeah. <coughs> it's about 13 more or less. So one more person off. So it's probably worth doing it like this actually because you, you, you could if you're as I said earlier trying to help the client to get the best carrying capacity he can you could be doing exactly this putting people more people on than the boat actually can take and gradually taking some off until you find what his maximum capability is. Um, are the bilges dry? Yeah I looked in there and was there another one after the uh, engine? <coughs> Just yeah. out of interest though, Fraser, you're at 593 kilos now, so you weren't at the uh, MCA's, they allow 75, don't they? So we could have had 600 for yeah. eight. Yeah, oh, so we were under the. So we were, uh, we were over in weight anyway. Right, yeah. okay. We're but now we're under in weight. But, but at the end right. of the day, what we need to do is get down to yeah, 10 yeah. or 7 degrees and find out what that is in weight or in people, isn't yeah. it? So can yeah. we have another person off? That was about 12.8, it didn't make much, much difference, one. So guys, you cl you're clear though, when we start off this whole process, you know, that you're checking that the bilge, like, like Pete just said, the bilge is dry. If you were doing this as, you know, an on-site survey, then you'd be making sure that the bilges are dry, tank, tanks are pressed up full, and all the normal gear is in position. That's about... 10.8, 10.9. So we're still not allowed to have this. So we need one more person off. I think the people we got on there now probably equate to six. Oh, we'll set it up and really. stay, so we stay, stay on the side under. just to win. No, no, it's about right. Oh, <coughs> Interesting though, what this was coded for. It was coded. Yeah. Yes. It's got coding. <laughs> Can't have been coded. What? Can't have been coded. It's an open boat. Alright, so we're at 9.4 degrees. Can't be coded in an open boat because it wouldn't pass a swamp test. No, there's no way to get the water out. Well, it wouldn't. You fill it up. You're not, on a boat like this, you're not, it doesn't have to pass the swamp test that drains in the same way as a rib. It has to stay afloat. 
So it's got to have foam buoyancy. No get out. It's got to have foam buoyancy. It hasn't got enough. No, is that efficient? Don't know. We'll call that 9.4 degrees. probably 85 and we can weigh me when we get off so if you uh, where's your calculator Steve yeah, well, yeah, Six, 69 69 as in 69 kilos yeah. 81 sorry 81 75 116 and call me 85 if I'm lucky. What you get if you divide that by 75? <coughs> uh, 5.64. Yeah. Well, you can't have 0.64 of a person, so that's five people really, isn't it? Yeah. Five persons. Yes. Including the crew. Are we all aware? Often people talk about people and persons and passengers and all the rest of it. <coughs> Your total number of persons. Total persons. Passengers and crew. Yeah. So. We're not just going to cows, but yeah. And you four guys just go over to the other side. And then Keith will measure the three board on that side. <laughs> And we'll check the heel angle again as well. You slack, John? I'm slack, mate. Nice. Well, I believe. Too much information. interested in the low side we're interested in that. So if hev heaviest and the lightest go back over there. Right, Keith and John measure the upright free boards again now in the condition that we've established the boat can operate with this number of people. <coughs> seven four seven. Might be, it's quite shallow there. Then, Keith, can you just run that tape along from somebody else holds it back end for you from the aft end to where you've measured it, to your measuring position, so that we've got, we can record the position we've measured, the longitudinal position <coughs> we've measured the freeboard at. Just on the corner of the boat, yeah. Two, three, and two, four, that's near enough.
Uh, the reason we're measuring from the transom to the position that we measured the freeboard height at is, is for future checking of the vessel. So that if you come back to it on a future occasion, for example, at the five year renewal, and you're trying to do a quick check of the freeboard, then you know that you're checking length for length because you're going to be checking at the same sort of position because you've got this piece of paper that tells you where the last measurement was. Otherwise, you could be taking it, might not make too much difference on this boat if you went a foot forward or aft, but on other boats, it could perhaps be a big difference. Yeah, and there's a bit, yeah. The other thing that we probably haven't told you guys is um, that obviously you don't need to drive her. That's me. Right. That's why I'm standing okay. on the centre line. Right. Okay. Didn't know when you covered that. So is it five including you? Yeah, and, and, and when you guys were all standing on one side and I was staying on the centre line, that is what the heel test allows you to do. It is mimicking the situation where the driver would be probably on the centre line at the helm. Yeah. If, if a big wave knocks the boat over, if something else knocks the boat over, if all the people <coughs> get flung over to one side, it's accepted that the helmsman is probably going to be able to stay in his position because he's got something to hang on to and things. Yeah. So he's not included in the weight on the side that is how far over the boat's being healed, which is very convenient when you're trying to be somewhere that you want to measure yes, what, yes. what's going on. But for usage of carrying like passengers and persons, there's only be four. Yeah. No, no, it'd be five people. Five, five people in total. Five so, five so, five you, in, 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 so this would be four, four plus one with a nominated crew. Yeah. So, yes, so then, then you get into different aspects of the rules, which is that the MCA don't encourage single-handed operation. If, if, if this was my boat and I was actually the driver and I wanted to take you guys out, that there are various other issues that the boat would have to comply with and I'd have to comply with to operate single-handedly, or as John said, if one of you is a reasonably competent person that I can nominate as the crew person, I can do that. You have to look at the manning requirements in the back of MGN 280, uh, depending on what, what category coding you're going for. It depends on what the manning requirements are, i.e. the qualification of the crew. Uh, so you, a skipper may have, may have the correct qualifications, but if you're nominating somebody as crew, you need to be sure that um, the person being nominated is, is suitably qualified in accordance with what MGN 280's requirements are. So what we've done so far is measure this boat as if this was the deck height. But what you need to be absolutely clear about is that on this actual boat, this is not the deck height. We're just pretending it is for the purpose of this test. On this actual boat, if we were coding this actual boat, this is the deck height. And, and, and that, that would mean that for it to be compliant as a decked vessel, this deck would need to be more than the... Oh, help, telephone, pocket. This deck would need to be more... The deck I'm standing on here we were measuring this boat really as it is, and if it was to be treated as a decked vessel, this deck I'm standing on would need to be 200 millimeters above the water line, and it would need to have it would need to have drain slots here, which would allow the water to drain out. So, as you say accurately, it's below it. So this boat actually could not be treated as a decked vessel. This boat would have to be treated as an open vessel. If, if we were measuring it as an open vessel, we would still be measuring to here, but this is then what, what is called the clear height of side, but then there's other aspects, which is what I was just talking to John about a second ago. An open vessel under the code has to have sufficient buoyancy, inbuilt inherent buoyancy to stay afloat if it's swamped. So this boat, in my opinion, probably wouldn't actually pass coding at all because it doesn't either have a deck high enough to be treated as a stepped weather tight deck or have enough buoyancy to be treated as an open boat however what, what we're trying to cover really at the minute is the heel test and the practical heel test measurement so, just just while you're on that though on on a deck on a deck on a deck vessel like that with scuppers a lot of people don't realise that they, they, they measure to the top of the bulwarks, they don't measure to the scuppers. 
and you need to measure to the scupper because that is or whatever is the lowest down flooding point. Yeah? Do we all understand what down flooding point is? <coughs> Would that be an engine intake on some motor? It might be. It might be. And there's, a, there's, there's particular comment on that in MGM 280 about, about air intakes on hull sides. That's a separate bit on the form, isn't it? Yeah. You measure to the deck and then it asks yeah. if there's any down flooding points lower than that. Yeah. But you see, <coughs> where you get a, bulwark, a vessel with a bulwark that's got scuppers in the side of it, in the side of it, you don't measure to the top of the bulwark, you measure to the scupper opening because that's your lowest, that's, that's the your point deck. at which the water will enter the deck. What, what I'd like, probably like to try and do is, is just cover the step deck bit again looking at this boat, then get the rib thing done because okay. I think some of the things we're talking about now might be clearer if we could get back to the office and stick some of these pictures up on the screen again quickly and we could flash through the okay. yeah. inclining report as well. I don't know how many of you have been to the theoretical training days we've done where we've talked about step decks and average freeboard and things like that. Obviously quite a few have. If, if, if we keep exercising our imaginations and we imagine that this deck down here we were standing on is in fact 300 millimetres above water line and therefore the boat complies as a vessel with a step deck We've done the heel test. We know what, the, what the, that it went to just under 10 degrees. We know that it had adequate freeboard to here in the fully straight through deck condition. But if this was a step deck vessel, it's very shallow. I should tip your engine up a bit. What, what, what you would need to be doing is imagining that that deck is the deck that we're measuring to, imagining that there are some scupper drains along the side here, you'd be measuring to the scupper drain about there, down to the water, which would be the deck height, and you'd be getting a freeboard to the lowest deck. You, you'd, you'd then be coming to this raised foredeck area. You'd be taking a measurement about halfway along the raised foredeck down to the water. From that, you'd work out an average freeboard. If, if the mm, tape measure, that's what we need. Thank you very much. So what we say the boat was 6.5 meters. So if the, if the fore deck is 2.1, And about the middle length of the foredeck down is giving us, let's say, 11.40. And if you take the length of the low part of the deck down there, about 3.7 and let's say we had a free board if the deck was high enough to drain about well it needed to be above 200 so let's say it was 250 so you can do what was that 3.2 times 250 millimeters and Whatever that was again. What was it? Two point four. Two point two two twenty by eleven forty millimeters. Get the total. Divide it by the length of the boat, and you'll end up with an average freeboard. And the average freeboard. So that the lowest bit of deck down there has to meet the requirement of the red line which for a boat under seven meters is 200 millimeters. 
but the average freeboard over the length needs to have met the blue line, which is 300. It's easier to show you that but for those that haven't seen it on a screen with a little drawing in the office. We've probably gone through that quite quickly, but at the end of the day, it's not that complicated. It's put all the people that the boat's allowed to carry on board upright, measure the free boards. It's let the helmsman stay at the helm position or on the center line, put all the people on one side, measure the heel angle. Shouldn't be more than seven degrees normally. Can go to 10 degrees if the free board stays within the upright requirement. I think that's all I've got to say. Anyone want to ask questions? Has the scuffle got to be a certain size and amount? Or the size of the deck? Uh, yes, they do. And that is based on the area of bulwark. Oh, and off the top of my head, yes, it's 4% of the area of bulwark. <coughs> Except that on a boat under 12 metres? Yeah, and then you've got... On a boat under 12 metres, if it's not practical to have that number of <coughs> slots in the side, you can have two ports in the transom at the back, which, which need to be 250 square centimetres, I think, yeah. in the book. One little point is, uh, you, if you see this boat, he's obviously had his life raft on top of the roof. If he was able to take eight or ten people out, that life raft would have been quite large, I guess. And that may can make yeah. a huge difference in the tip, you know, when, as we know, Brady. Fifty ladies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sailing catamaran. So that none of this heel test issues would apply to it. All, all this heel test stuff we're doing is what the MCA called a simplified stability procedure, which, which is them saying, all right, on a little boat, you don't have to have a full stability book, but it only applies to motorboats. So maybe that is a point I should have made and you're quite correct to bring it up. All this heel testing we're doing here on this boat is only applicable to motorboats, not applicable to sailing boats. If you want to look at the stability of a sailing catamaran, we'll have to do that on a different day. <laughs>